so welcome you again in my course power electronics application uh, in power systems so in the last lecture i discuss a specific type of static bar compensator which is thyristor resistor switched capacitor right so i'll continue to that and i'll also discuss the operation of uh, thyristor resistor switched capacitor or in short it is named as tsc in uh, more detail and also i will discuss some of the practical problems uh, in implementing this tsc in a practical power system okay so let us proceed this so if you look at this my discussion for practical uh, tsc configuration it consists of uh, this a step down transformer just for stepping down the voltage level from the system or transmission level voltage to a much lower voltage at this particular bus and then we have a bidirectional switch we have a fixed capacitor we have a small reactor the role of the reactor is to primarily restrict the current uh, during switching and also to restrict the high didt value uh, during the switching okay so this is the single phase configuration of tsc this is single line diagram which constitutes this single phase single phase tsc now of course we will discuss about this three phase tsc before that we will discuss uh, on some of the practical problems in operating this tsc one of the problems i already discussed in the last class or in the last lecture that for example uh, when this particular system is brought in uh, into the system then the current drawn by this capacitor or current drawn by this tsc unit is this this is what the current expression and if you look at this expression it consists of two term one is steady state component another is transient component now steady state component is the component which we desire for but the transient component is the additional component and it makes the initial current during this turning on operation is very high now we need to mitigate that and if you look at this to this transient component which i have written over here you can see that we can make this transient component exactly equal to zero if we have uh, these two conditions satisfied one is this this vco is equal to this which means that what is vco already i discussed in the last class that this vco is basically representing the initial charge across the capacitor so it is the voltage across the capacitor due to some left over charge in the capacitor okay so if there is no initial charge on a capacitor then of course the vco would be zero okay so that that means if the capacitor is initially uncharged then vco is equal to zero but if vco is equal to zero that doesn't mean that this component would be zero rather you can see that even if vc is equal to 0 this component will be there so in order to make it zero this condition has to be satisfied this is the condition i discussed in the last lecture which means that capacitor needs to be charged precharged to these values so that this this component will be zero this transient component would be zero similarly the instant of turning on should be such that this cos theta is equal to 0 which implies to that theta is equal to pi by 2 then there will be no uh, this transient current uh, for this particular component or of this transient current but there are some practical difficulties to achieve that so what are the practical difficulties so these two conditions these two conditions are called ideal switch turning on and ideal switching condition so these two conditions are called ideal switching strategies for tsc but of course we have some limitation to achieve the ideal uh, uh, switching strategies for tsc which i am going to discuss uh, today then uh, i'll discuss what would be then the practical switching strategies to to uh, 
have a very lesser amount of transient or no transient ok. So, this I am going to discuss today. So, what first let us see that what is the problem of this ideal switching strategies. So, the practical problems problems of ideal switching strategies are number 1 voltage at the SVC bus may not be pure sinusoidal. Uh, this is the limitation of ideal switching strategies. One is that the bus uh, at which this uh, particular TSC would be placed at that particular bus we may not have purely sinusoid voltage ok. So, that in fact, in uh, power systems you never expect that any point you will get a pure sinusoidal voltage. So, there would be some sort of distortion everywhere in every country wherever you may go. Uh, so, in power uh, system voltage if you measure it will not represent a pure sinusoid ok, it will be rather a distorted sinusoid. So, if it is so then our practical switching strategy may not work ok. Then what would be the second limitation? Now, if, if you look at this particular expression, this particular expression says that in if you follow this particular strategy, we need to, to charge the capacitor to a preset value and here is a problem to, to charge the capacitor to a preset value before you connect it uh, to this TSC unit it is itself a problematic task. So, so the second problem or second uh, difficulty with this ideal switching strategy is that to keep capacitor charged to a preset value. Okay. So, this needs additional charging circuitries, this needs additional control circuitries as well to keep the capacitor of the TSC unit to remain charged before you turning on this TSC unit. Okay. So, this is a this is another practical uh, problem or the limitation. Number 3 large capacitors are not designed to withstand prolonged DC charge or DC stress. So, this means that when you charge a capacitor that is the TSC capacitor uh, to, to a preset value before you bring in in uh, service or before you turn on the TSC unit, uh, this capacitor needs to withstand this uh, DC charge for a prolonged time and normally this capacitor is not designed to withstand that. So, that is a practical problem. So, therefore, this, this ideal switching strategies may not practically work because of these limitations ok and we need to go for some practical switching strategies uh, for this, this particular TSC. So, let us see what would be the practical switching strategies. So, this practical switching strategies the practical practical switching strategies may alleviate the difficulty that uh, we may have in, in case of ideal uh, switching strategy. So, here the goal would be the 
the goal is to have minimum transients okay so in in case of a practical uh, uh, switching strategy the goal is to have a minimum transient we cannot avoid the transient current but uh, we can uh, reduce the transient to an acceptable range so that is what the main goal is so we have different type of practical switching strategies uh, for tsc unit and i will discuss uh, one or two of them so one of them is number 1 let the capacitor has an initial voltage which represents the initial charge corresponding to vco okay so let the capacitor has an initial charge this we will uh, can do while turning off the capacitor or while turning off the tsc unit and we can keep the capacitor having a some some amount of charge left with that that charge may not be equal to vco uh, whatever i uh, discuss that may be equal to some value let's say vco dash okay number 2 is if vco dash is less than vm here vm is basically the maximum voltage or maximum supply voltage okay of uh, of the bus at which this uh, tsc unit is placed so if vco dash is uh, less than vm then turn on the switch such that vco is equal to vm sin theta okay it means that suppose if i draw this wave form suppose this is the wave form of the supply voltage v of t with respect to this omega t this is suppose the sinusoidal voltage source we assume that it is sinusoidal now what will happen if it is non sinusoidal that i am going to discuss okay so if it is sinusoidal then suppose this vco dash is uh, and then of course this is what you know this vm peak value of this is vm this is vm now if suppose vco dash is lower than that then suppose vco dash is something somewhere here then the instant of turning on switch such that vco dash is equal to vm sin theta then this will be the instant of turning on the switch here we will turn on the switch we will be turn on okay so if if we turn on the switch at this instant then this voltage this this voltage will be little bit of deviated and it will be then settled like this okay and the current current flowing through this itcr will start from zero will have some sort of transient settle down to here so this will be i of c ic of t okay so here we will have some minimal amount of transient before it settled okay so that will happen uh, if we follow this strategy okay and then what would be the next strategy next strategy is if vco dash greater than vm then turn on the switch at omega t is equal to pi by t or at the peak value of system voltage
So, this is in general difficult to achieve uh, to turn on the switch in a particular instant, but what is done in practical situation is we will turn on the switch when the difference of this VCO dash and the peak value of system voltage that is Vm is less. So, that is possible. So, some that is somewhere near to the peak value of the system voltage. So, suppose if this is the system voltage. If suppose this is the system voltage, then of course you understand that this is the Vm, this is Vm, this is represents V of t, this is represent omega t, and suppose this Vco dash is somewhere here, Vco dash is somewhere here. So just find out wherever is the difference is less. It will be of course at uh, this peak value. During that instant of time, let us turn on the switch. So, this is at the instant we will turn on the switch. Then what will happen actually? This system voltage will be oscillating and will be set quickly settle uh, to this value and current drawn by this TCR unit will be little bit of hurry and it will directly reach to the steady state value. So, that is what it will have, that is what it will have, this will be I c of t. So, these are some practical switching strategies okay? and that can be followed to have a minimum transient, again I am saying that minimum transient, we cannot avoid the transient fully, but we have the minimum transient. But at this point, you should have a idea that the major bottleneck of having this capacitor in SVC is that it is turning on operation, it is switching operation, it will cause this uh, some sort of transients like this and the, the operator needs to have a suitable control strategy to minimize the transient. Other than that this turning on and turning of operation both would be uh, both would be difficult or both would be challenging. In fact, not only I only discuss the turning on oper operation of this TSC, but the same thing will follow when you turning off the TSC from the supply. So, during that time, if you turn on the switch, uh, suppose when the capacitor voltage holds the, uh, the system voltage uh, or its peak and then if you turn it on at the condition when the system voltage again it is the negative peak, then there would be a uh, twice of the peak voltage that would appear across the, uh, the switch which will be uh, not favorable condition. So, this is something you need to understand at this moment. Okay? Other than that this TSC uh, operation would be uh, as similar to as this TCR operation, but this transient needs to be properly taken care of. So, the, the summary of this is that this transients of TSC the transients of turning on and turning off operations need to be need to be appropriately taken care of. This is the main goal of designing and developing the control strategy of TSC. Other than that, it is uh, its a basic operation is similar to TCR, but since it is having a capacitor so, one needs to have a proper strategy to turn it on and turn it off. Okay? So, when it will be kept on uh, for a prolonged time, there will be no issue, but basically we are designing this TSC as you can remember uh, and it is uh, advantage over this fixed capacitor is it is turning on and turning off operation, but uh, this may create some sort of uh, 
uh, transients to the system. So, this needs to be properly taken care of. So, this is one of the uh, you know the take home message that one should understand at this point. Then next I will discuss 3 phase configuration of TSC unit, 3 phase TSC unit. Okay. So, we have seen a single phase TSC unit will look like this, this is a, a single phase TSC unit, this whole constitutes a single phase TSC unit and a 3 phase TSC unit will consist of similar single phase uh, TSC units in all the phases and this either uh, to be connected in star or is to be connected in delta. Okay. So, a 3 phase TSC unit looks like this, if it is delta connected it looks like this. So, there would be a small reactor, there would be a bidirectional switch like this. then there will be a capacitor over here. Here also we will be having a capacitor, one bidirectional switch. I am assuming it is as a thyristor, but it could be any semiconductor switch you can understand. And here also we will be having a small inductor, then a bidirectional switch. then a capacitor like this. So, this is I am drawing only the 3 phase TSC unit, but one needs to understand that this is uh, to be connected to a step down transformer to the actual uh, point where it is to be connected to the network. So, there would be a step down transformer then this TSC configuration and that constitute the whole TSC unit, okay, 3 phase TSC unit. So, uh, this as you know the, this these are the small reactor and the purpose of this small reactor is to limit the initial current and to limit this high value of DIDT which may appear across the switch due to this turning on or uh, turning on operation. These are the capacitor units okay. and this the choice of this inductor or reactor should be such that it can fulfill the basic requirement to reduce the in rush current or transient current uh, of the system. So, this is basically a delta connected, delta connected 3 phase TSC unit. Okay. But uh, it also can be star connected like this. there will be a bidirectional switch there will be a small inductor like this and all the phases will have identical single phase unit So, here is the bidirectional switch again and we have a the capacitor of the TSC unit. So, this configuration is basically a star connected three phase. It could be a neutral also, neutral could be available three phase four wire. So, this is what the neutral of this TSC unit 3 phase 4 wire TSC unit. Okay. So, these are the capacitors identical capacitors this will be 3 identical reactors. So, this constitutes this star connected 3 phase 4 wire TCC unit and the all the practical SVC unit as already I have discussed are of 
uh, this three phase unit like this okay and remember this all would be connected to the secondary terminal of the step down transformer which I already have discussed. So, this will be connected to the secondary terminal of the three phase transformer and this three phase transformer can be either star delta or delta star or similar configuration to, to uh, suppress this triple N harmonics and to have various issues involved in it. Okay. So, this is what a practical TSC configuration. However, uh, we, I need to uh, tell you that a practical TSC configuration constitute of many identical three phase TSC unit, not a single TSC unit, rather many identical TSC units. So, the important note is So, the important note is a practical TSC configuration involves n number of three page TSC banks like capacitor bank of equal rating. But sometimes to keep TSC operation in two n steps n minus one unit units are kept of equal rating and a single unit is kept as half rated, half rated. Suppose this n minus unit, n minus 1 units having a uh, susceptance rating of the capacitance as uh, this B, then one number of unit is having a uh, rating of the capacitance is B by 2. This is just to increase the number of operation to uh, uh, from n to n minus 1. Otherwise, what will happen? If you have 3 units for example, you will have uh, 3 uh, different steps of operation. First is you, you can turn on this first unit, uh, then the next step will be you turn on the uh, first unit as well as second unit and the third step will be you turn on the uh, first unit second unit and third unit simultaneously. So, these are the three different steps of operation possible if we have three identical uh, TSC units. However, if we have a three identical TSC units and one TSC unit which is rated half of the actual rating of the one of the TSC unit half in the sense that half of the susceptance, then you may have some intermediate step. Uh, one is uh, you turning on this each of the unit once and another time you turning on and turning off the half rated unit uh, that will extend the whole range of operation from n to 2n. So, that is something one need to understand okay? and that is basically uh, followed in uh, practice that in order to have a reliable operation there is not only a single unit of 3 phase TSC is kept rather there are multiple TSC units, we consider n number of TSC units are, are operated simultaneously out of which one each of them uh, n minus unit would be of equal rated and one unit will have a susceptance half of the uh, susceptance of the other units. Okay. So, that is something one need to understand. Another thing I, I should mention over here is that, so here we talk about the steady state transient a lot. 
but we did not talk about the steady state component much. Okay. So, we, we discussed that uh, this transient component is one of the major attention of this practical operation of TSC unit, but also the steady state unit needs to be uh, appropriately taken care of. So, you can see that this steady state unit will have this peak value of the current which is equal to I p is equal to V m. This constitutes the susceptance of B c and B l constitute the susceptance of the capacitor and the reactor. Okay. And as we know this n which is uh, basically representing uh, the ratio of the uh, natural frequency of the oscillation to this power frequency. So, therefore, if you just put this um, this x c information that is this this information over here uh, in this particular expression. So, what we will get this particular component that is this particular component this B c multiplied by B l plus B c multiplied by B l if I write B c multiplied by B l which is basically representing this series combination of the susceptance of this uh, capacitor and this inductor unit. So, th this capacitor and this inductor unit are in series. So, therefore, when you consider their susceptance, so the effective susceptance, so the effective sub susceptance will be this, e effective susceptance will be this. Okay. Now, if you look at this, okay, so this can be written as n square divided by n square minus 1 multiplied by B c. Okay. So, which is very important because you can see that this we can bring from this expression and from this expression. If we just put these two expression over this particular expression, you will get this. So, overall susceptance in steady state. Uh, of this single phase TCR unit is basically having a factor n square divided by n square minus 1. Okay. Now, what is n? This n is the ratio of the uh, natural frequency of oscillation to the power frequency. Okay. Now, here some design consideration is taken care of. Now, if you plot this n square minus n with respect to n, if we plot this n square divided by n square minus n this factor only this factor only with respect to this n then what we will get when n is equal to 1 n equal to 1 means this your uh, natural frequency is exactly equal to power frequency which will not which will normally not happen uh, as per our design consideration. So, if it happens then this factor would be uh, what this factor would be infinity. Okay. And so, do you, if you go for the other values of this n, n is equal to 2, n is equal to 3, n is equal to 4 and n is equal to 5 and so on. So, what we will can see that this factor will die down and it gets settled to some value. So, that is why this uh, design of this, uh, this B L that is this susceptance of the reactor unit is to be designed such that this n is always greater than 3. Because if n is uh, lower than 3, then uh, there would be very high steady state current appear uh, or that will be very high steady state current that would be drawn by the TSA unit, which is not desirable of course. So, therefore, this V L uh, design of this V L is very crucial here. Okay. So, it should be such that this factor this n square divided by n square minus 1 should not be very high value. So, that is why the normal practice n is uh, uh, chosen to be uh, above 3. It should be chosen to be above 3. It means that this L and C units would be resonant which would be higher than uh, 3 times higher than the power frequency. It should be at 150 hertz in India or maybe at 200 hertz. So, this is another prime uh, important uh, note that one can uh, understand from this TSC operation. Okay. So, this is all about this TSC operation and this is the practical configuration of this TSC unit, uh, three phase TSC unit and uh, uh, then one thing that is left uh, is the discussion of this TSC along with this TCR which is our goal of this at the very beginning that we set over here. So, this is only left over 
other than that I have completed all this relevant discussion on this static bar compensator. Only thing is that this TSC TCR which is a you know very sophisticated home of this uh, static bar compensator that is left over uh, in discussion. So, a TSC T TCR consists of a uh, TSC unit a 3 page TSC unit which may consist of multiple uh, sub units and a TCR unit 3 page TCR unit which also constitute of multiple uh, 3 page TCR units and they constitute together as a TSC TCR and this TSC TCR is the most sophisticated type of the static bar compensator and regarding which I will discuss in the next lecture. So, apart from that I completed this part of the static bar compensator and uh, for today thank you for your attention again. Okay. Thank you very much for your attention. Mm -hmm.